so our space shuttle program was off to a really good start. Before the end of 1982, Columbia would fly four more missions, including STS-5, the first to carry a crew of more than two astronauts, launching on Remembrance Day 1982. Six months later, STS-6 allows the second orbiter, Challenger, to join the fleet. On STS-6, Story Musgrave performs the first spacewalk of the shuttle program from Challenger. On the 18th of June 1983, on STS-7, Challenger is in space yet again under the command of Bob Crippen. Challenger carries a very special uh, passenger on that mission. Mission specialist Dr. Sally Ride is the first female astronaut in space. STS-7 also delivers the first Canadian and Indonesian satellites into orbit, allowing the first mobile phones to be used as we would recognise them to do today. Just over a month later on STS-8, Dick Truly commands Challenger in space yet again, carrying Guyon Bluford, the first African-American in space. The 10th shuttle mission, launching on the 3rd of February 1984, carries Bruce McCandless into space on STS-41B. Bruce McCandless was there to test a remarkable new kind of spacesuit that would allow us for the first time to perform spacewalks untethered from our spacecraft without lines and hooks connecting us, being firmly strapped down. Controlled by 24 thrusters firing jets of nitrogen gas, the new manned manoeuvring unit would allow us to grapple uh, satellites if they were spinning out of controls and, and it wasn't practical for the shuttle to come in and grab them with the robot manipulator arm. And Hoot Gibson was there as well on his very first shuttle mission and he says that he'll never forget when Bruce McCandless got about 15 feet away. He looked through the viewfinder of his um, camera and he thought to himself, what a remarkable image this is. If I don't mess this up, I'm going to get some magazine covers with this. And it is true that um, images from shuttle flights rival science fiction. On the 30th of August 1984 on STS-41D, Discovery joins the fleet, the third orbiter under the command of Vance Brand. Between 1984 and 1986, Discovery would make a record six more flights. On October 3rd, 1985, on STS-51J, the fourth orbiter, Atlantis, joins the fleet under the command of Carol Bobko. STS-51J is one of seven classified missions that was flown for the Department of Defence. By the end of 1985, the shuttle had flown 23 missions and had four orbiters join the fleet, including nine space shuttle flights in 1985 alone, and 12 scheduled for 1986. Between Columbia landing on STS-61C in 1986 and Challenger lifting off on STS-51L, the difference is just 10 days. All of this success had the unintended consequence of convincing some that spaceflight, once regarded as one of the most difficult and dangerous endeavours humans are capable of, convinced some people that spaceflight was now routine and safe. NASA was arrogant. We thought we couldn't do anything wrong. But the safety of the space shuttle is a myth. A myth that is about to be tragically and horrifically dispelled.